Let's talk a little bit about the Los Angeles Lakers. They're at home after losing in the first round. Darvin Ham, he was let go. What is the latest on the Lakers coaching search? The Lakers are going through it with a lot of coaches this week that they don't know very well, that they haven't interviewed in the past. Remember, they just did a coaching search two years ago right. where there'll be some – uh, commonality in the names in this coaching search so they're bringing in you know assistant coaches like Mike and Nori from Minnesota uh, Chris Quinn from uh, Miami uh, James Borrego who was a head coach in Charlotte he was in New Orleans this year and of course you know JJ Redick and I think even the initial conversation with like Redick it wasn't necessarily an interview it was a get to know you with sure. Rob Palenka and they're doing that with some of these guys and then if they decide to interview him again it'll be more uh, they'll go deeper into stuff. And I think next week they'll start to bring in a group that they have talked to perhaps in the past. There are no rush in this search. And listen, I think there are candidates feeling the Lakers out, Lakers feeling them out. But this process is going to take a while. There's no obvious choice. There just isn't. There's no star coach out there available uh, that you would circumvent, short circuit a search uh, to hire. And so I think that's what the Lakers are doing. And listen, J.J. Reddick's name has been prominent in this. He and Rob Palenka really don't know each other very well. And so I think, and others in the organization, so I think that's going to be a process to see potentially if they could work together. And James Borrego, who's been a head coach in the league, uh, familiar with Anthony Davis, they were in New Orleans. And so I, I think this is going to take time. And I think the Lakers are going through stages of, you know, kind of introductory conversations, and then they'll go back and start to go deeper into it with people. And would you look at this? He has Bronny James back on the board being drafted by the Boston Celtics at 54. And who is the 55th pick? Oh, yeah, that would be the Los Angeles Lakers. So we're just about five weeks away from the draft. That's kind of wild. Time is flying. I don't know where it's going. But Woj, how much can Bronny improve his draft stock in that amount of time? Well, he, he can improve it a lot because people haven't seen him play a lot this year, and they haven't seen him play well this year because he was coming off of five months, you know, after the heart episode. You know, he was limited in what uh, he could show people and what he did show people with USC. But he was he, he had a very good showing at the combine last week, very good in the drills, uh, uh, sh the shooting drills, which has certainly been a question for him. You know, okay, not so great the first day of five on five, and then played really well the second day. And it reminded me of the player I saw last year at the Nike Hoop Summit which is, you know, a player who really, really guards, uh, who is has a great IQ on the court. And so he has a pro day today in L.A. Yep. Uh, Clutch Sports has their pro day. A bunch of them, teams will see guys on the court again today. And then you'll get into individual workouts where teams can bring players in. They can meet them. You know, they can do some more stuff one-on-one uh, -on -one with him or in a group. So teams are getting to know him. And there's, like you said, five weeks until the draft. And so he's got time here to, to consistently show people what he's capable of. And he's a long-term project for somebody. They're, he's 19 years old, right? And I think he's a player who, uh, you know, he's going to need time in the G League. You know, and there's lots of guys like that at this point in their career. And you see how they develop. And so whether he goes in the second round early, mid, late, or doesn't get drafted, um, he's going to have an opportunity to play professional basketball. Well, and that's all you want is you want an opportunity. You want an opportunity, and, and from everything that we know, uh, I wish him the best. But I will say this about the G League process. There's so many players that have come up through the G League and have developed. Again, Pascal Siakam. We see uh, Fred Van Vliet. Like, we've seen so many guys that have developed within that space and gotten better. But that's a part of it. No one's saying that that there should be, in my opinion, there shouldn't be a tremendous amount of pressure. No, he has an opportunity to improve his stock. And he's done a great job thus far. And, th and this is a part of the process. He's just also dealing with the amount of media pressure that comes with his family situation. Is it best for Bronny to be off the board when the Lakers are picking at 55? Look, I think it's best for him to dictate his career with what he does on the floor. And the ability to show up at the combine and do what Woj mentioned, you know, improve, I think that's what people are watching for. The word opportunity is definitely being thrown around. And I know we are in an imperfect world where some people get opportunities where they should not. But nonetheless, he is a player that is being evaluated. And if he's able to build something like Woj said, the G League is still a valuable place. I, I, it's hard to criticize how someone gets the opportunity. It's more so criticize what he does when listen, he has it. Listen, even most first-round picks play a significant amount of time in the G League. Outside of, 
most lottery picks spend time in the G League. What he's hoping for, what Rich Paul is hoping for, is an organization that has a track record of development that he can go to where there's a plan in place for him, that they have some belief in him, and that's where they hope he'll get drafted. And picks fly around the board in the second round. Teams trade out, they trade in. There's several teams who have multiple picks. And so you may not have a pick on the board. You can buy a pick or trade a future to move in at 48 or 50 or 52. That's typically what happens on draft night. You know, I just, again, I'm going I'm to I'm say this. When it comes down to going through the draft process, obviously this is everyone's dream, and you wish every draft prospect well throughout this journey because, you know, some guys are not going to get their name called. Some guys don't even get invited to the combine or even invited to workouts. At the end of the day, my, my thing when it comes down to Bronny is everything is earned, nothing is given, right? And throughout this draft process, long as he goes into, into these situations and he leave it all out on the floor and he does it with his production on the floor to determine whether or not he get drafted or where he get drafted, I'm okay with it.